I got access to Windcraft Rekindled early, and all I can say is, wow. This is one of the most incredible updates this server has ever had, to the point that only Windcraft Spellbound rivals it, just flat out. Everything this update adds has absolutely blown me away, and I think if the changes this update made were ever applied to the whole server, Windcraft would be extremely close to just feeling like its own video game. This video is going to be all over the place, I'm just going to talk about the stuff I experienced in this phenomenal update, so let's just get into it. Let's start by talking about the focal point of this update and the most impressive, the new mob revamp, and just wow. On a small scale, so many random mobs just have models now, alongside attack animations and death animations. Like, look at this disgusting grangly goober. Ugh! Ew, get away from me! His pupil whites out when he dies. Ugh. On a smaller scale, there are now tiny, barely perceivable environmental mobs, solely designed to add more depth to an area's vibe. For example, the decrepit sewers now feels particularly gross, because there are cockroaches and flies lurking about near the entrance. You can even smoosh the cockroaches. They make a little splat sound effect. There are also Moyang's scrapped fireflies floating around in Lutho, very deep cut, Windcraft, and you can often find little birds which will fly away once you get close. I'll even let you in on a little secret. There is a giant squid somewhere in the ocean. But the real victors of this model change is simple. The bosses. Holy wow, the bosses. The ones that I fought have so much more character to the point that I think I'll go over them in order of how much I have to say about them. Witherhead is now a shambling skeleton with long hair. She now leaps at you as a primary attack instead of camping with a bow. A very visually distinctive change for sure, and a gameplay change which kinda makes sense since it is a new player's first dungeon boss, and a new player is unlikely to have a particularly busted ranged option at this level. Aracaticus is now even more spidery, descending up from a web above. She can charge at you, shoot webs, and you can even see her little spider jaw things move to bite you. There's this boss altar boss named Rymek Luke, who wields a literal six bullet revolver against you, even stopping to manually reload all six bullets, your opportunity to attack. He also starts chucking dynamite about when he gets lower, which is super sick. They truly did make America cannon. Slycar is leagues better now. Every single attack is custom. Slinging slime, slinging himself with slime, slinging three slimes, and calling down the Inkstorm from Splatoon 3, but if it was actually good. All of these attacks having a poisonous after effect on the ground. And once he gets low, he lurks towards the slime storms which will have culminated in the middle, lowers himself down into it, and... Actually, this boss gets so cool that I think I won't spoil Phase 2. You guys should really go run this dungeon when the beta opens. And the eye. Wow, the eye. Not only a fantastic glow up from its physical block counterpart, but also showcases perfectly why the new models are amazing gameplay wise. They are simply readable. Gone are the days of watching a white sparkle appear in front of the eye with like six spells it could possibly be. Now, each attack is well choreographed, especially its bigger moves. When the eye rotates into the back of the socket, it will consistently shoot out a wide AoE attack once it rotates back round. The laser attack now has a very distinctive sigil for it, and the bite attack has the eye lean back decently far before leaning in to bite, making the boss so much more readable. But don't you worry, the fight is still very, very hectic, as the wretch is still a factor, and the laser can now actually aim for you, rather than aimlessly shooting in a straight line. Not to mention the final phase is a lot more of a hectic feeling than before, as the pupil now has way more health and mobility, including on the y-axis, bouncing about like a particularly angry dodgeball. To take a break from the model talk, how are the world events? To start, there's an absolute ton of them, enough to fill up an entire page of the vanilla quest book if you have world events selected. These will occur periodically and you have about 5 minutes of warning before the event goes down. When it occurs, you will be fighting off waves of mobs, much like the combat challenges from loot runs, usually ending with a boss mob to finish off. Upon victory, you'll get a lovely reward chest with dungeon keys, a solid amount of unidentified items, emeralds, 
and sometimes boss-specific drops, though those might be buggy right now. In fact, everything might be buggy at the time of recording since the update is still ultimately in beta. So do keep in mind that anything buggy you might see when you eventually play the beta will likely be fixed before the full and proper release. Now, having spoken about world events, it seems I haven't spoken about the big, red, devilish elephant in the room. That's because I'm saving him for last, since there's a few extra things of notes to mention first. First up, there's a new loot run in Canyon of the Lost! This is a pretty solid lower level loot run, with decent navigation via a combination of the loot run only using one half of the region, and new cloud platforms that launch you into the air. There's not too much more that needs to be said on it, but this was the first thing I played with the new Windcraft music, and holy crap. This update supports custom instruments now! Like, take a quick listen to these. literally almost sound like a game OST that's separate from Windcraft, if not for the cute inclusion of some of the nicer sounding old Windcraft instruments cleanly intermingled among the new ones. This music is present in the loot runs for the Canyon of the Lost, Sky Islands, Rock, all four raids, every raid boss, and Annihilation. So if you're the sort to normally not have Windcraft Noteblock OST on as you play, I would genuinely recommend turning it on for these parts of the beta, because they are utterly phenomenal. Speaking of raids, the ones I got to play showed great improvement. A lot of the challenges have been slightly tweaked to be rebalanced and easier to understand for a first time playthrough. As not only have these rebalances occurred, every raid challenge now begins with an instruction room which details how the room works. The timer of the raid freezes while you're in here. So if you're new, you can take all the time you need reading how the challenges work. This is genuinely kinda massive since your first time on a raid can often be very disorienting, especially with the more complex challenges. Alongside all this is now the Raiding Syndicate. I'll tell you a bit about the rewards it brings, but I suck at the game, so I didn't rank up at all. The only thing that I know is that you have to level up to have three buff options instead of two after the completion of a challenge. Finally. The two new raid bosses that I got to play were well revamped. The Groot Slang fight now has a giant main Groot Slang, hurtling about with a giant snake-like body, with different sections you can hit, and as the fight continues it'll actually lose those segments, like a certain other worm-like boss from a certain other Minecraft-like game. There's also good old Greg, who looks absolutely phenomenal now, dragging his bony self across the arena just to get you. He also has some new attacks, and well... He's he's pretty hard! <laughs> Shoutouts to Floperator of Flop Studios for toughing it out against him for like 5 minutes, after myself and the two staff members with us got simultaneously pwned by him. Anyway, time to address the final, great big red elephant of the room, Annihilation. This guy will attack once a week, and if you lose to him, tough luck, you're gonna need to wait. Because of this, Annihilation is a fight you will really want to get right. I've attempted him a couple times, and there are some things of note. First up, all of his attacks have distinctive sound cues and animations on his model, to make sure you're actively watching the boss as you fight him. Otherwise, he might catch you off guard with his very strong hitting attacks. Here's several of these attacks, but there are two which stand out as the most important. As he starts to take more and more damage, he will begin spawning in healers to the far left and far right and far back of the arena. These should be immediately DPS'd as soon as possible, as enough healers are fully and entirely capable of healing Annihilation back to full health, and nobody wants to deal with that. The other big move is one where he summons an attack called the New Sun, with a particularly obvious sound effect and animation. If this attack is used, Kill the sun at all costs. This is probably the most crucial tip I can give you, because if left alive, the new sun will grow and then explode. This explosion has a 200 block radius, with apparently a hard-coded damage value of 1 million. 
In other words, the new sun attack must be stopped, otherwise it will literally squad wipe you and whoever you're fighting Annihilation with. And you'll have to wait an entire week before trying him once more. And most importantly, make sure you come prepared with the most powerful build you can muster. Because across our time with him, I'm pretty sure little to none of us media ranks actually successfully killed him. Though I did. Behold, the early annihilation guaranteed insta-kill strategy. Step 1. Get a person with a super rare admin skill tree onto your party. Step 2. Have the admin use their skill tree's ultimate ability to despawn annihilation. Congratulations, you are win. In all seriousness, apparently staff members have managed to kill him numerous times, a few solos even, so definitely possible. Just as I said, make sure you're prepared for the hardest PvE fight of your life. Anyway, that'll be all from me. And you might be thinking, there's so much else in the changelog I haven't covered. What about the aspects? The early game quest revamps? The several other things down there? This is because of the rather evident fact that this update is bloody massive. And the raw footage I amassed for this video is just about four and a half hours worth. So this has been Duoface. If you're attending the beta, I'll see you on in a few hours. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you support this admin dropping a nuclear bomb onto Deathless. Have a good one!